Alright everybody, welcome to episode 2 of the Cuckoo Attack podcast for games. Episode 2. <laughs> I'm Chad Hembrock, with me is Patrick Hughes, and we're going to talk about some more games this week. Um, pretty much catch up on what we skipped last week. Uh, we ran out of time. We um, missed quite a few games there. But... Yeah, we missed, the, we missed a few games that came out in the first year of Switch, um, and we also just talked way too long because we love this stuff so <laughs> we'll see we'll see how the rest of these episodes go we'll try to tone it down a little bit and um you know i don't think the first episode was too bad there was some audio issue uh with my laptop fan that should no longer be an issue um with issues on my end yeah bandwidth cutting. issues yeah and uh we should have some better better video feed uh better audio feed now and uh Hopefully it works out a little better. Uh, you can find this podcast on YouTube as well as an audio-only version on Podbean. And we're currently under um, review with <laughs> iTunes, so hopefully you'll be able to see that soon. Yeah. So let's get right into it. So two years of Switch. First thing we missed, my wife mentioned <laughs> to me immediately when she listened to this, you guys didn't talk about Splatoon 2. <laughs> Well, I don't really like Splatoon 2, personally. Uh, I think Splatoon 1 was fun, but I kind of got burned out on it. I only played single player. I didn't really get into the competitive scene. Um, I did play it at the Switch event that we talked about last week, and it was um, it was fun, but I just suck at it, so I'm going to be honest. I'm not good at it. <laughs> but... Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I picked it up, and it's a, it's a fun game. It's pretty cool. Um... So it still has a strong single player game. Um, so if you enjoyed that in the first one, because I thought the first one had pretty fun actually, a uh, single player campaign. It's almost kind of Mario Galaxy ish with its like hopping around to little planetoid kind of action short based puzzles and stuff. So, yeah. and then the biggest new addition for Splatoon 2 was the addition of uh, like a horde mode. It's called Salmon Run. And that was pretty fun um because it was more of a like cooperative multiplayer experience so you fight like waves of different salmon and like monsters like invading your island and you have to like work together to survive three different waves so that was really cool i didn't um, i didn't know that i never played yeah. it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah but yeah I, I probably only played for like about a month before i guess i got diverted into the other games um i do want to check out the uh the expansion that they had at some point the uh like Oct octopath yeah oc no not octopath it was octo or something uh, the, that was another octo game we missed octo yeah yeah <laughs> i'll shoot yes <laughs> uh but yeah that unfortunately released the same time as hollow knight and that grabbed my attention so i have yet to check out the octoline expansion but it looks cool too I heard it provides a pretty good challenge if uh, you're looking for more challenging single player content. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd probably consider getting Splatoon 2 um, if the price was a little lower. Um, yeah. For me personally, 60 bucks was it was too much for me just because I didn't enjoy it that much. I thought the single player was fun in the first game, but it was very short. So, um, and I think I got to like the last level and I probably put it down. Um, I don't know. It was on the Wii U and I just at that point I was probably playing Breath of the Wild and all that mm. stuff so um, I didn't really get into Splatoon 2 at all other than playing it at the Switch event that time and um, I think I tried to do the test splat but I couldn't get connected I was having connection issues or I just missed the weekend altogether due to timing yeah um, yeah so um, you know if, there, if there's a sale on it or I come across it for like I don't know 20 bucks I haven't looked to see how much it cost in the last you know two years so who knows what it's going for on like ebay or something um but i would probably pick up a copy of it to check out the first player because you know i did think it was fun it was just you know it was on the wii u i had to be tied to my tv because you know i couldn't take the switch pad more than you know a couple feet away right and, <laughs> so um 
Yeah, I mean, I think I'd, I'd probably check it out for, you know, 20 bucks or so if I could. Um, yeah. But, I don't know. But, yeah, you said there's a good co-op multiplayer. That's cool, because I really enjoy... Co-op. That is really cool, too. Yeah. yeah. That's, like, one of my favorite ways to play games nowadays, as I mentioned in the last episode, is, um, you know, cooperative multiplayer instead of competitive multiplayer, just because I'm not very good. <laughs> All right, so... Next on the list, we have uh, Mario plus Rabbids. Um, I don't know if you played that at all. I had literally no interest in it because after playing Raging Rabbids on Wii, <laughs> I completely lost any interest in playing anything with the Rabbids in it. And I was so sick of Black Eyed Peas Pump It <laughs> after playing that. <laughs> playing that game like it was fun for like the first 10 minutes and it was like all right and i actually i had an extra wii um because i worked at a store where we we got them in when they were really hard to get and we didn't have any pre-orders so i bought an extra one and i threw it on ebay and i gave that game away with the last one i sold (laughs) because i was just like i'm not keeping this game and i tried to use it as incentive for somebody to spend more money on my wii on ebay (laughs) which to be fair i probably made like 20 bucks off the deal because shipping sucked and it was probably mm. completely pointless but i didn't i did not screw anyone out of a pre-order though like we we fulfilled all of our pre-orders before i bought one as an employee because <laughs> i would have been That's... pissed if it was me so <laughs> um but yeah no i didn't end up getting that game but i did try it at the e3 uh booth when they had the demo there at the ubisoft station and um the humor was actually pretty fun like um i was kind of burnt out on rapids too but it, it's had a surprising amount of charm to it um that's what i hear like i know a lot of people played it and really really enjoyed it and said that it's basically a sleeper um yeah yeah it kind of plays like uh lighter version of XCOM not as like serious I see <laughs> Tusco <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's okay um, but yeah to me just the, the strategy was a little too loose for my liking because there were like so many different like combinations of moves that you could do and like you can move like halfway across a board and stuff and I was just like I have no idea how to plan for any of this because it seems like any planning can just go out the window um so yeah, it wasn't my from... personal taste but yeah I was I've heard say, that sounds like you know strategy games are not my thing at all um and i know you're big fire emblem and advanced oh, lord yeah. and all that stuff so <laughs> so I'm I, sure. I like a little more rigid rules to my strategy game so yeah i'm yeah. i'm too dumb to play this game so i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. I'm just like, all right, can I, you know, RPGs, it's like attack, 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 magic, attack, 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 magic. I don't have to worry about <laughs> seeing in the future 10 moves from now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, no thanks. No thanks. That's not for me. But, um, yeah, so uh, another game that we missed was Kirby um, Star Allies. Which, right. that's another game I didn't play much of. I played the demo. The same, just the demo for just me. The demo, oh. yeah. And I th- thought it was it was Kirby. It was very, very, very easy, though. Like, yes. <laughs> having the allies pretty much fight everything for you as you just move forward was, was basically what I did. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's an appeal to that, especially if you like Kirby games, but... I need a little bit of a challenge. Um, <laughs> you know, Kirby games are never really hard. Um, Typically not, no. Um, no. But, I mean, they're still fun. They're still fun games, though. Um, you know, like, my, my personal favorite's probably always going to be um, Kirby's Dream Land on Game Boy. Or, nah, Kirby's Adventure on NES. I think I'll, I'll change it to Kirby's Adventure on NES. The mini games in that sell it just <laughs> so much more. And the... the uh, the secrets in each level where there's two exits to each stage it unlocks more of the of the level that's that was just really well done and um i i really enjoyed that as a kid i played it a lot um but the game boy one i think was my first experience with kirby um i played that all the time 
it's so. just a, such an easy game to pick up and like yeah. play through and just have fun. Like, yeah, it's fun stealing powers and like you know making the stars and getting you know just you know every item will give you a different power and you know that's that's Kirby. You, I mean, people, yeah. people know what Kirby does for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what if only does. from Smash Brothers. Or... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you know he's he's a he's a staple for Nintendo and it's just. I heard the I heard the last game that people really enjoyed was the was it Robobot? Is that what it was? The three DS ones are a lot of fun, yeah. especially Robobot, which was the last one. Yeah. Um, I never played yeah. it. I think I played the demo of it at um at GameStop one day for like you know five minutes, and it was like all right, this is cool. But again, it's just kind of Kirby kind of has a bad taste to me just because <laughs> it's it's just too easy, <laughs> like. I well, think the newest one I actually played for a long time was when you came over. We played um, Return to Dreamland on Wii. Yeah, we yeah. played that for like an hour or two. That like, one was pretty fun. It was fun. That's I mean, yeah, it was definitely fun. It, it was easy. It was definitely easy. Easy, but, but it just, was it was cool to have a co-op. At first, for co-op in the series, it was a pretty good entry. Yeah, um, yeah, that was really cool. Um, you know, taking a game that I've only played yeah. single player. And, which is why I was hopeful for this one because I was like, yeah, more co-op and combining powers. That sounds kind of cool. But yeah, I was I was disappointed by the demos. There wasn't as much creativity as you usually find in the Kirby games, mm. and like the boss battle felt way too spongy. It was just like spamming attacks, and that wasn't quite how I remember the Kirby games. Um, I just no, it's not a Kirby game unless you fight the tree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's like every single game you fight the tree. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was one of the like few Kirby games I've skipped in a long while because I've picked up a lot of the Kirby games. And they've all been great. So yeah, I play. I think I played Epic Yarn. That's what it was. Was it was it Epic Yarn? Oh, yeah, Epic Yarn. Yeah, yeah, I think I played that on Wii. But again, it was like I played through the first like couple stages and. <laughs> I mean, that one by that. far is the easiest one for sure. You yeah. can't even die in that game. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, I think but I played through the first level. The just... art style, yeah. yeah. Couldn't help but be charmed. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, so we had Kirby come, and then uh, we had a bunch of ports that came out as well. Um, yeah. The biggest the port, ports. Yeah. <laughs> Mario Kart 8, we didn't talk about that at all. Yeah, um, that, that, and that was just like a, a month and a half after launch. Yeah. That was... That was a great way to just get Mario Kart on the system early. Yeah. Like, if you want Mario Kart, there it is. You got it. Yeah, and a lot and... of people never played it because, you know, there was only, what, 13 million Wii sold worldwide, so... The Wii U's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wii U's, yeah. Not yeah. Wii's. Wii's was like 150-something million. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... But, yeah, the, um... Yeah, it... There was a lot of people that never heard of Mario Kart 8. I know my uh, my sister came over for a Christmas party. I think you were at that. Or maybe you couldn't make it that night. Um, yeah. But this was a couple years ago, and I was like, yeah, we're going to play Mario Kart. So we had a we were trying to do like a four-player split-screen Mario Kart, and she was like, yeah, the one on the Wii. I was like, Mario Kart 8. And she's like, yeah, on the Wii. I said, no, on the Wii U. And she's like, what's the Wii U? had no idea what the Wii U was, but she had a Wii, and, um, yeah, so that kind of, but again, it's Mario Kart, so if you've played a Mario Kart before, you should have no problem playing this Mario Kart as well, so, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, it was great, I mean, there's really nothing to say about it, I mean, they just, they took the game, they took all the DLC, they threw it in one package, they unlocked everything for you right off the start, which was the yeah. one disappointment, uh -huh. I guess, even though... I already yeah. did it on the Wii, but on the Wii U, but it gave a little more motivation to play single player. Yeah, because otherwise it's just like, okay, how many, how many three star gold yeah. cups can I get? And then you know, I got to the point where I just sucked and couldn't do it, <laughs> so I stopped. But <laughs> but you know, I played the game enough on the Wii U. I mean, having that game and having people over and playing it all the time, so it kind of um, it kind of you know. I think I paid for it in the amount of money I, the amount of time I spent playing on it. I think it paid for itself, even even with the DLC or the uh, the deluxe version on Switch. Um, yeah, it's it's by far the best Mario Kart like in the series, and just the package, just like 
so many tracks and racers and the the switch version has the addition of battle mode which yeah. the Wii U lacked and um, that was fun that was a lot of fun playing that like i played that online with you and a couple other friends before and um it was nice to get back into that because i hadn't played balloon battle since like 64 i guess yeah and that was um yeah that was that was fun i used to play that all the time with my neighbor um you know back in like 2000 <laughs> so um <laughs> So yeah, that was that was a lot of fun to have that come back, and uh, it was a good way to you know that was like the extra bonus I guess was if you buy it on Switch you can play it online easier, and you can well maybe not easier <laughs> we can talk about Switch yeah. online a little later, but um, for the most part Mario Kart Online works pretty well. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad, but uh -oh. um, but yeah, um, we also had Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze come. Mm -hmm. um, which I played on the Wii U, and again I only beat like the first boss and put it down. <laughs> I know I'm horrible. <laughs> I just don't have time, I, and I and when I do have time, I do stupid stuff like go back and play Link to the Past for like the thirtieth time and play Half Life Two and <laughs> other stuff instead of playing the games. The Con games are so good, so so good. I played Return. Um, I played Return on Wii. I didn't play it on 3DS. Um, it was fun. Just, yeah. But I didn't play too much of it. One of my friends was talking about it. He's like, oh, you gotta get it. Because he loved the Super Nintendo one. And that was actually one of the first games I ever bought myself on Super Nintendo was Donkey Kong Country. I, <laughs> I saved up like, it was like 80 or $90 to get that. And I saved up my allowance for just weeks and weeks and weeks in a little jar and then I like took the jar to Babbage's in Lake Forest Mall and went there so happy I bought it and I don't even think I had money for tax I think my mom gave me the rest of it like the tax money because I was like <laughs> I got $90 I'm gonna buy the game and it was something like that it was either 80 or $90 but um <clears throat> I remember playing that game non-stop non-stop and oh. like finally beating the minecart level was like Victory. It was so satisfying to finally beat that level after playing it for hours. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I gotta play Tropical Freeze. I've heard nothing but good things about it being one of the best platformers in the last like you know couple years, and I just I just haven't done it. It's yeah, it's bad. Definitely but... check it out. <laughs> and the music, oh my gosh, so good. Yeah, having yeah. David Wallace back, uh, such a good composer. Yeah, Donkey Kong music is always pretty good, so it's very yeah. catchy, and they, they do a great job with that, and then you've got the intro, like, you know, Donkey Kong Country, the intro for that, just amazing, one of the best intros, then you got DK64, that intro is amazing, <laughs> <laughs> the DK rap, so good, oh, my so good, <laughs> um, yeah, so Donkey Kong Country games are, are, you know, just Donkey Kong games in general, they're, they're usually very fun I, I don't think i've played one that i haven't enjoyed i just haven't had time to sit down and play it the other stuff has kind of taken over that that little bit of time mm -hmm. yeah so you have anything else to say about tropical freeze i know you played it on wii u did you rebuy it on switch no i was i was tempted so a lot of these ports that we'll talk about it's like the beauty of them is that if you didn't get to play it on Wii U, these are like top of the line games that have come yeah. over the Switch. So, but it is a harder sell to double dip um, unless yeah. you just really, really love the game. Yeah, and that's kind of my thing. I picked it up. I bought Donkey Kong Country and a buy or Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and a uh, a buy one get one free from Target or buy two get one free something like that. I think I bought. I don't even remember what I bought. Oh, I know what I bought. I bought Halo Master Chief Collection <laughs> on Xbox One, and then I bought The Evil Within on Xbox One, and then I got Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze as, like, my free game. <laughs> <laughs> quite the outlier For, right? of trio. <laughs> <laughs> Which they actually said that uh, Halo Master Chief is coming to PC now. But it's through Steam, and I was kind of like hoping Microsoft would do it. That way, I could get it for free because I already bought it. <laughs> but 
since they've been pretty good about giving you the PC versions for free if you bought a game on Xbox One, at least recently. So yeah. that would have been nice to, you know, Halo's all right. I mean, I, I played the hell out of the first three. And then oh, after, yeah. after that, I, I just... Halo 2, like, all the time in college with my roommates. That was, those were fun fun gaming sessions. Yeah, I remember we got, a, we got, like, a leaked copy of the French version of Halo 2. So it had like English subtitles or French subtitles. I don't remember, <laughs> but it was it was pretty cool though. Like you know, we were playing it weeks before it came out because you know everybody had a hack to Xbox and <laughs> it was just one of those things that that happened. But it was cool. I remember you know just random people like overhearing it in the hallways in college and be like, "You have ha- you have Halo Two already? What? Can I play it <laughs> right now?" And they you know want to find the the person that had it so. It was pretty cool. So another game they ported over was... uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, yeah. which such a good game. That game I did play. I played it, and I um played almost all of it. I beat I beat Toad's campaign. I mean, and... it's not too long. No, it's yeah. not. But I did it. <laughs> so... <laughs> so I did Toad's campaign, and I did I think I did like half or three fourths of Toadette's campaign. So you didn't beat it. Yeah, I did. I put it down. It wasn't hard. I just I, I just stopped playing it. <laughs> Cuz there's only like 3 chapters in that game. You're Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But I played I played a lot of it though. I did put a, I put some uh, hours you should into finish it. that game. You should finish. It's so much fun. Yeah, but then I got to hook up the Wii U again. <laughs> That's true. Just get the Switch version. I don't know. <laughs> then I have to play it all over get those again. Extra bonus levels. Yeah. Yeah, they they have the um... It's a co-op game now. They added a co-op uh, update to it. Oh, did they? That's yeah, cool. that, the co-op update's free. Okay, that's cool. Um, I mean, I, I've thought about picking it up, but again, I think it'll be something I have to pick up if it's a little cheaper. Yeah, no, I, I understand, especially for the length of the game. Forty dollars is a hard sell. So yeah, I mean, the forty bucks isn't too bad, I guess. But when I already spent forty bucks on it the first time, it's yeah, that's, like... that's the, it makes it hard on a double dip. Yeah. But I mean, I think it might be worth it though, because like you said, it has the uh, the bonus levels, and that includes um, New Dog City, right? The yeah. So I think it had three or five levels from Odyssey. Okay. And then they just introduced new DLC, which I think is another six bucks, and it includes like an additional ten challenges or something. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean that makes sense too to use Mario Odyssey levels, considering that's where you get stars from in Mario Odyssey. You have to find Captain Toad. And He's like it's... hiding in the worlds and like yeah. I found a star for you. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's it's great though. I mean, that's it's a cool tie-in, and you know, it makes yeah. sense. They actually you know embedded the games together, so it's 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 cool that they're using the same assets on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've again, I've thought about it. It's probably something I'd pick up if I can get it cheap, even if it's used. Mm-hmm. Um, even I just though... hope it's well enough that they make more, like a, like a full sequel or something. I mean, cause... Everyone that plays it, really, like I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about it, other than it being a little short. But, yeah. I mean, other than that, nobody's complained that I've, you know, heard of that's played it. It was a lot of fun. The controls were good. The camera was good. Um, I think they did it you know a really good job with the game and you know hiding stuff the puzzles and it was good Mm -hmm. it was really good and i'm hoping you know again i I think i will get it i think i will get it eventually i just gotta give it some time and you know actually scope out a cheap version of it so yep and then um another port nintendo port first party that's kind of what we've gone through so far we've got um Mario mm-hmm. Brothers U Deluxe, Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, yeah. which what is one of the most recent ones? Um... Yeah, that came out two months ago in January. Yeah, which the name is so weird, just to Keeping carry the over, U I guess, in it and stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess that's how they identify it. So <laughs> yeah, I I played this. This was a a launch title on the Wii U, um, and I bought it that day. That's what I bought. I bought my Wii U with 
Super Mario Brothers U, and uh, I bought the deluxe version that came with Nintendo Land. So mm -hmm. I played a lot of Mario Brothers U because Nintendo Land kind of it was fun. There was a couple fun levels in it, but I didn't really like the gamepad the way that they implemented it on some things. Um, it, it was hit or miss for some of the games on that. Yeah. But... So, um, but I played it. It was okay. I didn't like. Again, it was it was kind of easy Mario, and Mario had that. You know, it's that new Super Mario Brothers uh, engine, so yeah. everything feels like you're running on ice a little bit. You're kind of sliding. <laughs> um, you just got this floaty feel to your uh, to your character. Um, I didn't like, and, and I know the game's for kids. It's very positive. I didn't like everything clapping and applauding you for everything, <laughs> and all the Koopas like, yay! I don't know. I just thought it was a little over the top. I mean, it was it was funny the first time it happened, but then I was just kind of like. I don't need that to happen every single time I do something. Um, you know, it was kind of cute, like, with the music, where they're like, it's like, da, 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 and they kind of dance, and, you know, but, again, it was just one of those things I was just kind of like, this isn't Mario. I just want to run around and play, and I want to kill that guy. I don't want him to, I want to step on him and kick his shell. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, like, have him applauding me for doing a good job in the level he's supposed to be defending. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was kind of weird. Uh, but. yeah. I mean, it it does grow a little stale in the sense of like this is the fourth like new Mario Brothers game using the same kind of palette and stuff. But yeah. if you haven't played any of the new Super Mario Brothers, this is probably the best of the bunch. So yeah, I really enjoyed the first one on um, DS. It was yeah. That one it was, cool. was fun. It was a different. It was a different feel, you know. Like you get that mushroom and you take up the well, entire screen. Like the first and... one, yeah, yeah, to do it and just yeah, the the mega mushroom mm -hmm. and finding the secret paths and that one was pretty fun. Yeah, I played a lot of that, and even uh, you know my wife, she played that a lot. She like took my, she went on a trip and she took my DS with her and came back and she had like all the all the gold coins, all the um, the special coins, and like beat the game. <laughs> like, which was I, like, I think shocking for the portable nature of it helped just because it was a very accessible game just to play a level and put it down kind of yeah um but i did i did really enjoy like the overworld map of mario brothers u was just so beautiful and so colorful and i was just like wow i don't even, <laughs> i don't even remember to be honest like i said it was it was a launch title <laughs> and i played it i played it a lot but i kind of just got turned off of it and then I remember right. one night I went to go play it. It was like the first time I went to go play my Wii U in like a couple weeks, and when I turned it on, it had like a three-hour like update to download, and I was <laughs> like, "Come on!" And that's why, like, I was just like, "I'm done with modern gaming. This is really making me <laughs> mad." <laughs> but you know, obviously, it you know it wasn't a big deal. It just, I think it was just one of those things. I bought it. I bought the system right when it came out. Mm -hmm. and, and then had the day one update then just the big updates and um, yeah <laughs> kind of is what it is i mean i don't feel like nintendo's like the switch is great for updating um oh it's been so good yeah like it's very How rare quick play games and even updates are so quick well the games usually update themselves like like I'll turn it on and it's like software updated up in the corner um the only time i'll get a message is if the os actually has an update and then I'll, you know, it just asks you to, you know, there's system update required or system update waiting. Do you want to update? Yes. It reboots and it takes like two minutes max. It's great. They really yeah. improved that, that environment and that system. So that was really good. Um, so I think that pretty much covers, I mean, I'm sure we probably missed something that we're not thinking about um, yeah. as far as ports. There's a lot of ports. Um, and that was that was just of... first party stuff. Yeah. Um, but we also have uh, on here we didn't talk about at all was Diablo three. Mm -hmm. um, I played a lot of Diablo one on PC. Um, back in like the late nineties, and I was a jerk and used trainers to kill people and steal their their items and their money after they died. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I was a jerk, and that's pretty much all I did on Diablo. So I 
really don't have much to say about that game. Um, I just <laughs> didn't play it. I know a couple people who are playing it right now, and I didn't even know they had Switches, and then as soon as I found out they did, they were immediately like, oh, are you playing Diablo 3? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, did, did you pick up Diablo 3? I did end up picking it up. It was one of the like, last games I picked up just to use my uh, Best Buy Gamers Club before it expired. So good. Um, <laughs> but I, I haven't I haven't got a chance to really get into it. I, I played part of like Act One and it's pretty fun. Um, like it it handles surprisingly well for a console version, which because I've only played Diablo before on PC, so I, I was surprised at how well it adapts. Um, yeah. Because they have like a specific button even for like dodging, which I don't think you could even ever do in Diablo on PC. So that's pretty cool. So does it have a? I haven't even watched gameplay on it just because the game's just not for me so um I, I really just wasn't interested even when they announced it um did they is it a cursor you move around to move your character or do you actually walk? Uh, no, no you use the joysticks and... okay you actually walk okay yeah. that's fine yeah it's probably a dumb and question then, like, but i never played it so. there are, like powers or skills that you have are all mapped to different buttons and you can like reassign them and stuff so it, it handles pretty well for yeah. for a console game yeah that's good oh. that's cool so I am looking forward to playing more of it. I just keep getting distracted by other games that pull my attention. Yeah. Um, so I know um, we also there are some other big third-party um, ports as well. They did a, the Wolfenstein Two, and they did Doom. Yep, um, yep. Which Team. for for what the game is, I thought it looked pretty good on Switch. I never played it but i watched i have it on pc so i didn't feel the need to jump into it on switch just because a first person shooter for me has to be on mouse and keyboard on pc um but the the way it looked it looked awesome in the trailers and from what i hear like the company that did it i forgot their name um Bethesda's. It was Bethesda, but it was another company that was working on the uh, optimization. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. I forgot the name. Something was it something bomb. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't remember. Anyway, they did a fantastic job on it though. Like they were pretty much being looked at as like the kings of like optimization for Switch at that point because they were making these games just you know you could see I guess it was like dynamic resolution so it was kind of going in and out. Um, mm -hmm. in certain things but overall I mean I heard the game played very smooth and then they um, they added motion controls in the future like a future update added motion controls yeah. and that's cool yeah I mean it's just they did a good job with what they had to make it available to this you know what what have we got 20 million consoles sold something like that now user base yeah. so it's you know it's, it's good to bring stuff over like that and then Wolfenstein 2 came out shortly Shortly after the original one was launched, I think I don't think it was that big of a delay. It was too long. It was less than a year, which is yeah. pretty. Um, I think it ended up coming out on Switch in like June, yes. and I'm pretty sure it originally came out like maybe November or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I could just, be wrong, but yeah, not again, too far. Apart. I had it on PC, so it was just kind of like whatever on Switch. But <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just it was good to see that come out there. And I think the last the last port to talk about is uh, Okami. Yes. Uh, the HD remake. Um, yeah. So and a great a great port too, from what I hear. Yeah. So I've heard uh, nothing but good things about this game, and to the point where you even gave me a copy of it on Wii, and I yes. never played it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Dude, someday. <laughs> Okay. I will. I'll play it eventually. <laughs> um, but I, I did buy it on Switch because it's more likely that I'm going to play the game on Switch than play it on my original Wii or my Wii U. So um, it's there. I, I did boot it up one day. I was I was at a I was at the car dealership waiting for an oil change or something, and I loaded it up, and I was just kind of going through the dialogue at the beginning and. I just wasn't in an environment and in, in the right mindset to actually sit there. And yeah, you definitely read. gotta set some time aside to get into it. That yeah. one. Yeah. So as soon as I started it up, I was like, "This was a mistake," <laughs> <laughs> and then I ended up canceling it, and I I forgot what I even started playing, um, <laughs> just because it was it was completely just a bad time to even attempt to play it. So. Yeah. 
but um, I mean, I hear it's like a Twilight Princess. Yeah, well, it, it came out the came same out. year as Twilight Princess, so it definitely got a lot of comparisons. And did, it, on, did it win Game a of lot the Year? Of sites, a lot of sites that won uh, their, their Game of the Year over Twilight Princess. And I remember just being like, what the heck, that's impossible. How can something beat Zelda? And then a year later I tried and I was like, okay, this is actually really awesome. Yeah. Um, and that makes me want to play it. Just, you know, you know how yeah. much of a Zelda fan I am and everyone that listens to this should know that now just within the first two episodes but <laughs> and it's but. been such a long time since i've played it i this is probably the one port i want to pick up the most still um i probably try to figure out if i can import a copy from japan because it doesn't seem like they're doing any western physical releases but... yeah the physical was only japan and yeah, the, the but it's digital... still in english so you if you import it, I think yeah. it actually okay. has uh, Japanese voice. O- it has Japanese voice acting, but it has I mean, it's mostly English a subtitles. Game, so. yeah. yeah, yeah. But I actually uh, heard that the uh, the audio is better in the Japanese version. Oh, cool! That's so what maybe... I've heard. And the box is cool. Obviously, having a physical copy of that is yeah, you know, and it won't look plus. too out of place being all Japanese art style, uh, yeah. watercolors and stuff. So. Yeah. Exactly. So um, I thought about importing it, but then it was twenty bucks on eShop, and I but, I, I want to say it dropped to like I want to say it was like fifteen or seventeen. It, it might day. have dropped to fifteen. I I think I remember saying that. Yeah, and then that's when but I Capcom, grabbed it. They have some pretty good sales every now and then if you keep an eye on their games. Yeah, so I think that's when I grabbed it because I was like, ooh, fifteen bucks, and I hadn't bought it yet, and I was like, I don't need a physical copy. I was like, I have it on Wii. <laughs> I'll, I'll play that if i need to play a physical copy <laughs> so but um, yeah the reason i'm really excited for this one port in particular um my favorite version was the one on the wii just because the motion controls with the celestial brush powers was so cool to kind of like physically do rather than with like analog sticks which it was originally for ps2 yeah and so you can do that in this one if you're playing docked with the joy cons or you can also if you're playing handheld use the touch screen and actually trace the brush patterns too so either way you play is a great way yeah i'll definitely get into it um i i need to right now i have um i need to finish up thimbleweed park like i talked about and then i still have the messenger which i haven't started and axiom verge which i bought on the wii u and switch and haven't really started so <laughs> um i don't know I, I i'm at a point where i think once i beat thimbleweed park is when i'll start my next game i just haven't <laughs> even touched my switch really other than to play some uh, tetris 99 um <laughs> but we'll get into that in a little bit but i think that pretty much covers the ports um you know it was pretty port heavy everybody you know always complains about ports but i think it's always a good thing to bring great games that were on previous consoles and bring it to this new market and it makes people you know the portability sale alone is sometimes worth that you know that gamble (laughs) for those companies and And it's paying off you can see it's paying off because and and people still want more ports of games like i really want metroid prime trilogy still i really hope (laughs) yeah metroid prime trilogy would be awesome um there's there's a bunch of stuff like i just i'd take mario golf (laughs) mario golf from (laughs) from gamecube i was a little disappointed that luigi's mansion wasn't on on switch and that that metroid 2 wasn't on switch but yeah yeah the metroid 2 remake because that was one of my favorite games to play um oh the 3d and that was pretty awesome i'll have to admit yeah i have it i i played like the first i think i beat like two metroids and I just put it away because, well, I think I burned myself out on that because the first, the the week it came out, it was like a week or two before I actually beat the Game Boy version yeah. on my 3DS. So I was kind of like, all right, I'm done. I'm done playing this game because it was one of my favorite <laughs> games as a kid. I had it, you know, I grew up with it. I think I, I think my mom got it for me for Easter. And like one year she gave me, you know, a gift. It was underneath the couch. That was where she hid the egg. And when I pulled the egg out, the game came with it. And, um, (laughs) and it was Metroid, you know, two return to Samus. And I played it all the time and I could, I could always kill like the first 10 Metroids or whatever. And then I just didn't know what to do after that. I, I could get the spider ball and I think I got the ice beam 
and then yeah. that was about it. Like I couldn't, I didn't know where to go after that. So um, yeah, I think that was the particular challenge with the Game Boy yeah, One. Yeah, because the sprite, you you know, Samus is like that big on the screen, <laughs> running through this world, and like the camera kind of moves with you when you jump, and um, I don't know. I think they did a good job with it though. After I went back and played it to actually sit there and be like, no, I'm going to beat this. It was it was fine. I think they did a good job with it. Um, looking back, um, I I started playing the fan recreation they did. Um, the A it was A M. Oh yeah, A2MR yeah. A two M R or something awesome. like that. Or, yeah. I don't know what it was. I didn't finish playing that that version. It was A M R two. Yeah, A M R two, something like that. Um, but yeah, I played I played that. Probably yeah, because it was another about... Metroid remake too. Yeah, That's what it was... another Metroid remake too is what it was. Yeah, so that was that was cool. That was a lot of fun playing that because um, it reminded you know it was the game that I grew up playing, so it was mm-hmm. special. But it was in that Super Metroid style, which finally playing Super Metroid after not playing it for all these years, that <laughs> game was amazing. I was so happy I played that game. <laughs> such a good game it only took me like three years to beat it <laughs> when i played it i played it the first time and like i don't know in like two or three days i just kind of played it when i had free time and i put it down stopped playing it and then when i picked it back up i was literally like an hour away from beating the game <laughs> so <laughs> so going back and actually beating it was just awesome that was such a cool game the final bite but or the final boss fight and everything was great so but I don't know, hopefully we'll get some of those games ported over. Hopefully we'll get a virtual console. Hopefully we'll get a lot of stuff. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. All right, so we talked about the ports, um, and we only have a couple more games that are on our list. Um, I guess you did mention earlier uh, Octopath Traveler. Um, oh, that's right, yeah. We, yeah, we didn't really touch on it. Um, the only thing I did was play the demo, and Same. Yeah. it was... I, I loved the art style. I loved the diorama look, the pop-up stuff. Uh, that's actually what the collectors collector's edition had when it came out oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that looked really really cool but i had a feeling it was going to be a very long and very deep rpg game and especially with you know eight characters eight different endings i assume is what it has mm-hmm. i couldn't i couldn't do it i couldn't bring myself <laughs> to do it i played the, i played the demo um i tried playing it one night before going to sleep and reading all the dialogue pretty much put me to sleep <laughs> just because I was tired at the end of the day and I never revisited it. Um, it looked beautiful. I'll give it that. Um, you know, it's probably not best to talk about a game that I have nothing to say <laughs> really other than, <clears throat> you know, it, it looked great. It looked really good. Yeah. I'm sure if you like those old style RPGs, you'll have a, you know, you'll, you'll probably enjoy it. Um, for I've, me, heard, I've heard friends who've loved it, so yeah, I, I've read a lot of people who've played it and really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> for me, like those old 16-bit RPGs, like the only one I really enjoyed was Chrono Trigger. I love that, and that even <laughs> brings up another one. The I Am Setsuna was another launch title or a round launch title oh. for Switch. And yeah, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many games where I'm, we're not going to get everything. But yeah. Um, yeah, I Am Setsuna was one that was a uh, like, spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger, I guess, and that made me interested, but then I heard mixed mixed reviews about Got it, so yeah. I, I never picked that up either, even though I, I really wanted to. But um, back to Octopath, like, yeah, I just, it looked great, I just had nothing to really say about it, because um, I just, the demo kind of turned me off after, well, again, I just, I just, I was falling asleep while trying to play it, <laughs> so <laughs> probably not the the best person to talk about that game right. i mean a pretty pretty similar sentiments um like the game is beautiful i love the 
retro aesthetic with the mix with the kind of high end fidelity of HD graphics. It's really yeah. cool looking. Yeah, it was like a 16 bit game that they would have never been able to do that. Um, yeah, <laughs> which just made it really cool as a different take on. It's just a, a fresh, a fresh spin. Yeah. yeah, it was a fresh take on the resurgence of uh, pixel art. That's you know mm. the current kind of fad with a lot of games. Everything's kind of doing that, you know, retro. Look. That that definitely stood out. What they came up with. Um, yeah, it was excellent. And the story looked intriguing. I played the demo of the uh, the dancer girl, and the story was pretty cool. Um, I just have a tendency to get I I don't like RPGs that are a little too heavy on the like RPG mechanics like the turn based and the like millions of items and stuff uh, I like more action based kind of RPG so yeah. I knew this wasn't going to be a game for me personally but I I could see a lot of what there is to like for other people playing it yeah yeah it's kind of the way I am yeah, I, you know I love like action games so action rpgs are kind of it depends on the game i mean there's some that i like and there's some that i stay away from just due to the nature of you know just depends yeah but um but yeah that's i guess that's all we can really say about that but i wanted to add that because that was a pretty big game that came out that we didn't talk about at all that it was had a it sold very well so very yeah. well it was hard to find in stores when it came out um I guess they completely like underestimated the um, the sales for that game. Yeah. <laughs> I remember hearing that people could not find copies of it, and like I feel like I heard like ten thousand, like a number of like ten thousand copies were made um, physical, and like I don't remember you know where I heard that, but if that was what it was, like they were just gone. And um, I did see it at Best Buy last time I went to Best Buy and looked through the Switch section, so it is available now. It's easier to find. Um, so, yeah, that's I think that's pretty much it um, yep. about that game. So we'll move right along, try to finish this uh, two-year topic up from last week. <laughs> Another hour in. <laughs> but uh, we've got uh, Mario Tennis Aces launched. Um that was again a game I did not purchase, but I did play quite a bit of the um, the test tournament they did, the online tournament, yes. yeah. and, which was um, pretty way to try out the game. Yeah, it was cool. Um, the gameplay itself was it was fun. I mean, I I started Vir Mario Tennis on uh, Virtual Boy, and that's probably still to date my favorite virtual you know, Mario Tennis game, not virtual. Um, but yeah, Virtual Boy, I mean, you know, as, <laughs> as, you know, quote unquote bad of a system as it is, I had one as a kid when it came out, so I played a lot of Mario Tennis and Wario Land, and those two games, you know, obviously Mario Tennis moved on to Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and, you know, <clears throat> 64, and kind of made itself a franchise, um, Wario Land obviously was a franchise on Game Boy, but Wario Land needs to come to another console because people that did not play <laughs> Virtual Boy are missing out on a gem. Um, but that's all yeah. I'm going to say about Virtual Boy. That game's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> make that a whole other episode. I can make that an entire episode talking about that game. I love it. The game's so good. Um, but yeah, Mario Tennis, my, my favorite still to this day is uh, the Virtual Boy version. But um, but Mario Tennis on Switch, they did a they did a good job. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. The uh, the super moves were they were interesting. It was really cool to be able to like keep do your flips and stuff over to like the other side of the yeah. court to catch yeah, and, like charge your meter as you do flips and yeah. Um, it was it was a cool take. The worst part about it was the amount of lag that. Um, was it yeah. during the test play? I mean, it was it was part of a test play, so I'm sure they were testing the waters, trying to figure that out. Yeah, I, I don't remember hearing anything it did about suck it. Suck when you got matched with someone and it was just like you were trying to play like ten frames ahead because it was lagging so badly. Yeah, just... that that happened to me. Like there was, I beat like the first guy, like destroyed him, and then the next game, I just got completely obliterated, <laughs> like just done. And um, I, I kind of, I played quite a bit of it, but then 
after a while I was getting nothing but laggy matches and I turned it off. Um, I didn't. I didn't pick it up. Obviously, um, I know a lot of people did, and I don't remember mm-hmm. hearing about there still being lag issues or anything after the uh, final version came out. Maybe there was. I don't know. Did you? Yeah. Did you pick it up or no? I didn't. I didn't. I no. just did the test run too. Yeah. Um, I do think it was nice. I think you were able to at least see the connection level that the person had before you start the match it was like so wi-fi that, bars it was like red yeah, so red yellow green or something like if that if someone looked like they were going to be poor connection you could just not join the match and that yeah yeah, yeah. um but, but yeah i mean it was you know again it's a test so i couldn't i can't complain about the network on a test i mean i can i guess but <laughs> i i don't feel it's not fair it's not fair to <laughs> It's not fair to, you know, base an entire game off of a, you know, crappy internet <laughs> connection. Yeah, I didn't get to play the um, the single player mode, which I probably would have enjoyed because, I mean, I, yeah. do, I like tennis games. Like, of course, Wii Tennis was <laughs> awesome on Wii Sports. <laughs> um, my One of my favorite tennis games ever was um, Virtual Tennis on the Dreamcast was a lot of fun virtual tennis 2 they were all in the uh the dreamcast slash naomi system it came out in the um in the arcades they came in big candy cabs the japanese candy cabs at least the one i played on was in the candy cab um but yeah with you know that that being said um you know mario tennis it's it's fun if you you know it's fun yeah it's definitely it's hard to, it was a hard sell for 60 bucks for just a tennis game it almost felt secretly like a, a fighting game because you were like trying it was playing a lot of mind games like am i gonna lob it or am i gonna spike it over here and yeah. just kind of back and forth but... that's the way a lot of tennis games are though it's very strategic and like you know you can get right up close and then somebody can just lob it over your head and then you move back and then they just tap it and you lose so yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i did i did not pick that up um i don't know if i would even if it was cheap just because i don't I don't know. <laughs> Sports games don't really do it for me unless it's hockey. I'll pick up a hockey game <laughs> eventually. But um... I haven't picked up many sports games probably since like the GameCube days, like Mario Golf and uh... Strikers. Mario Strikers. Strikers. That was awesome. Just the art <laughs> style of that, like yeah. it was so different that it was worth it. Just the intensity of Mario, just like wanting to murder people. <laughs> and then they had. Uh... That was on the Wii. Was it Mario Sluggers on the Wii, or did that come out on GameCube too? I don't remember. Oh, the Sluggers is a baseball one, yeah. but they they had a the soccer one also. It was like Mario Strikers Supercharged. Yeah, Supercharged. Yeah, I remember that. But I, I knew Sluggers was the baseball one. Um, yeah, which wasn't bad. Um, but yeah, I've kind of moved away from sports games too. So yeah, the only thing I still play is hockey. Um, when I was a kid, it was all sports games for a lot of stuff, but you kind of grow out of it. Um, but I guess with Mario Tennis, we'll move into another very anticipated title. That was Super Mario Party. Um, yeah, which... that was great because they announced it in June. It came out in, what, September? And just like a few yeah. months later. Oh. <laughs> Something like that. And I was excited for it because, um, you know, it looked... I played a lot of Mario Party on N64, um, and I played a little bit on GameCube. But most of it, I think, was on N64 with uh, one of my neighbors. The and... good ones. <laughs> yeah, the good ones. <laughs> but I remember playing. Um, you know, I remember playing those and um, hearing bad things about the last few that came out, like Mario Party. I think it was ten that was on Wii U, right? It's one of the bad ones. Yeah, yeah. that's what I remember. There hasn't hearing. really been a good one since Mario Party Eight back on the Wii. Yeah. That's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. So I never, I never played any of those. Um, I don't know, I just, I didn't have a lot of people that would play that kind of stuff, so um, I just never played it. But um, I was looking forward to this one, because when I watched the video, it took me, like the trailer for it, it took me right back to when I was playing on N64. I was like, oh, the board games, the mini games, it looked, it looked fun. It looked like, um, you know, a very traditional Mario Party game. Um, and then they talked about the online, and I got really excited that I was going to have online, because... You know, even though I don't have people, my neighbor to play with anymore, I could play with you online or something. And then I yep. heard that it was ten mini games only. <laughs> and... Oh, 
feels like worse than that. It's like a random rotation of like yeah. five, some games that yeah. they change on a, their win. <laughs> yeah, so that was disappointing. And that honestly, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I didn't buy it is because you couldn't play board game mode in online mode. Um, yeah. Just because I don't have you know, I don't have anyone close to just play with, um, you know, unless you drove up or something, um, which you did, and we, that's how we played it, <laughs> so yeah. it was fun, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't need my own copy to do that, and no, no, and if yeah. I, the only time I would probably play that is with you, or if I had a party, and if I have a party, you're probably going to be here, so, <laughs> so it works out, um, yeah, yeah, it's understandable, yeah. but, um, but I was looking forward to it. I was really looking forward to playing that game, and um, you know, the games uh, are. I was looking forward to purchasing it, but um, you know, when I played it with you and Mike, it was uh, it was cool. I, I really enjoyed you know playing it. It felt like a Mario Party game. People were getting screwed. There was, uh, you know, <laughs> RNG is so strong in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Extra stars and um, the mini games were fun. Um, you know, just typical Mario Party. It just you either mm -hmm. you either like it or you hate it, and even when you hate it, I don't see how you can't like you know, like not like it because it's still just it makes you smile because it's just unfair and stupid <laughs> and you know the motions of the Joy Cons are kind of silly and it's it was it was fun to play that I'm glad I did and um, hopefully um, hopefully they'll do a patch that'll allow you to do board game play and if they do I'll pick it up. <laughs> more gameplay online um i don't see that happening but no yeah that's the yeah. strangest thing because like this is one of the games that seems like prime for additional content of any form just be it online play or some more boards because it only had four boards yeah so that's more what you were telling me yeah it's like one of the few nintendo games that are just not giving additional support or have announced nothing for it so it's very strange because it really is a great return to form this particular mario party it's a really fun game um like they had a lot of cool new ideas but they have a few misses here and there but overall it's a it's a pretty decent mario party um so i i hope it gets further support but as is it's still a pretty good mario party yeah so well, maybe one day, maybe one day they'll they'll announce uh, some DLC. Maybe next week, <laughs> maybe next week at GDC they'll <laughs> announce something. <laughs> I doubt it, but you know, maybe maybe even E3. Who knows? You know, Nintendo always releases mm -hmm. stuff when you least expect it. I they, mean, like I said, they they released this game in like a matter of three months, so yeah, DLC come out of nowhere. Yeah, they could. So. Um, Speaking of stuff coming out of nowhere, um, we had Tetris ninety nine get dropped this past yeah. uh, this past direct, and that was um, a, a Switch Online exclusive. Yeah, Switch Online exclusive, um, which you know I'm sure is one of their biggest ways to try to get people to sign up for the um, service, as well as make people feel like they're getting their money's worth for the service. Now, yeah. with that being said, I have a lot of things to say about that. Um, <laughs> Personally, for me, it's twenty bucks a year. It comes mm -hmm. out to like a buck sixty or something, a buck seventy a month. I don't feel like that's too much money to be complaining about it. If it's a buck it's sixty, not. it's not. It's really not. Like, yes, it was free before, but you knew coming that's, into that's the, the main Switch. It was free before, but they told you when the Switch came out that you were gonna play for free until September. And then they I just give think you it, it came year. with the expectation that something would improve or change, and really all the changes they added a price tag. So. Sure, um, my biggest complaint is really not having a feature to invite a friend to a game. Yeah, like um, that is one core feature we would love. Like I can get over not having voice chat. Um, you know, it'd be nice if it was on the Switch. But mm -hmm. I don't know how, unless you have a wireless headset or a uh, port in the bottom of the controller, the Switch being docked isn't going to be the best option for uh, voice chat. 
if you're using handheld, sure, because it's right there, you plug it in, you do whatever. Um, I can get over that because they want you to use an app. Everyone's using Discord. Discord is easier, in my opinion, than using the convoluted app that only works for specific games that it has access for. Um, but the biggest issue is really just, you know, playing Smash Brothers. I can't just say, hey, you're online. I can see you're online. I can see what you're playing. Yeah. But I can't click <laughs> on your name and say, join my game or send you an invite to play to my arena. I have to make an arena, text you, or call you, or find you on Discord. And then do that with, you know, three or four of my other friends on Facebook or something like that in order to get just a simple four on four or, you know, a four uh, player smash, which is another thing in smash. You only get four players. It's ridiculous, but <laughs> there's enough lag issues now. We're not going to get off topic, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's, that's really the biggest thing, but, but then again, it's so 70 and you get NES games and that's the thing like yes everyone's like oh I've bought these games a million times it's like okay but you're getting them again and you're not paying for them you, you shouldn't look at the NES games as you're paying for the NES games you're, the way I look at it is I'm paying for the service now it is what it is it was free they told you it wasn't going to be free uh, for after six months the system came out and they delayed it for another year so you got an extra year for free Mm -hmm. And now it's twenty bucks a year. I don't know. To me, it's just not worth the argument. <laughs> it still has room for improvement. Absolutely, I, yeah. I'm hopeful. That's the main thing. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm looking as forward. Tetris 99 is an example. If they keep doing cool, interesting things like this, I think it's going to become a very cool staple. Yeah, I mean, using like Tetris 99, it was the first exclusive outside of the NES online package. Um, Tetris 99 is great. It's um, it's essentially Tetris. You play against 98 other battle. people. Yeah. Battle, yeah, <laughs> battle royale. Um, it's fun. Like I personally just kind of play it like Tetris um, the first couple times, and I think the best I did when I like the first day I loaded it up, I got like 15th, and I was like, all right, 15th, that's not bad, and I wasn't really paying attention to what you do as far as like. <laughs> attacking people for you can attack for um you can attack the people attacking you you can do random you can do ko's and you can do badges and you get badges the better you play so the better you're Every playing time you ko someone you get a badge yeah. basically so the better that and you're yeah, doing I think four ko's uh, as a badge basically increases the amount of trash you dump onto other people yeah. when you clear rooms. yeah exactly so um it can get crazy like i played I've played recently, like, that's kind of my go-to game right now, because it's something I can pick up and play for, you know, 10-15 minutes and get a few games in and, you know, be satisfied with the night and turn it off. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I played the other night where literally the game started, and 30 seconds into the game, I had an entire screen of lines dumped on me. <laughs> and I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> but, um... <laughs> I still haven't won. I've gotten third place probably ten times. I just can't beat those last two people. I thought I did last time I played. I thought I beat the second person, but they died right when I died. And I got the third. They got the second. And, of course, player one had, like, one little line at the bottom of the screen. And I'm like, even if I would have beaten that person, I would have died instantly. Cause by... Probably you guys just targeting each other. And this guy's like, sure, go yeah. ahead. And he's got, like... <laughs> He's probably. I should have just sat there and spun the block because in this game, you can just sit there and spin the block for like I don't know ten seconds before it actually like drops in spot. So if you're like at the very top, you can just sit there and spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it, and then it will finally. <laughs> it takes forever for it to actually like lock the block into place, but it's a lot of There's fun. A, a fifth way you can target too. I forgot. You can actually use the other stick to manually select what window you want to attack. Yeah, and you can also, if you're playing handheld, you can uh, touch. Oh, cool, Yeah, cool. you can touch the screen you want, but it's really hard to see, because, like... Oh, yeah, so tiny. You know, there's 99 <laughs> screens, you're really looking for anyone that's red. <laughs> like, if they're about to die, the little icon will turn red, so you, um, mm. you, know, you can click that. Um, there's some really crazy videos on Twitch and on YouTube of people playing the game. I watched this one the other day where this guy had... He literally built his level all the way to the top, 
and just kept getting like two or three lines and then he had i think he had 40 ko's at the end he had he knocked out 40 of 98 people <laughs> insane like and he was like doing t spins which is like the, the little t piece you can like drop it down a hole it doesn't fit in and then rotate it into the spot and then that'll take out like a whole row and um it was just nuts watching this guy play and it made me feel very very inferior in tetris <laughs> but and like i said i i play just like i always play single player for the most part except for now i usually play i usually attack the people attacking me and then if i see a bunch of people attack on me i'll move it to ko and then those people will disappear because i'm not attacking them anymore they won't attack me and then I'll move it back to attack, and then I attack a bunch of people again. <laughs> or, or I attack whoever's, you know, going. Um, sometimes I'll do KO. It all depends on... Um, it all depends on, you know, really what's going on in the game. But um, I love it. I love it. It's a fantastic job. I would love for it to just have a single-player regular Tetris as well, but that kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, it, being an online not- exclusive. <laughs> So. But I, I do hear, I think, that they might be adding more features. So maybe like some co-op mode or something would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, really, really enjoy that game. Um, again, like I said, it's it's pretty much what I've been playing and a big reason why I haven't finished some of the games I have on my backlog. <laughs> because instead of getting, instead of, you know, completing something Multiple that I've... Multiplayer games tend to do that. Well, it's like, just, it's not even that, it's just, just Tetris. Time. You can't, like, make <laughs> progress towards anything else. <laughs> yeah, it's just Tetris. I can just play it for, like I said, play it for 15 minutes and put it down, and then I'm like, all right, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, that was pretty, I think Tetris 99 was probably the last, like, bigger thing announced for um, Switch. Uh, mm-hmm. That was at the last Direct, which was in, when was that? That was... February, mid February, mid February, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, so it hasn't been out that long. Um, and uh, the only other thing that came out that we haven't really touched on, um, I'm gonna let you speak about this because I did not pick it up, but that's um, Nintendo Labo. Yes, uh, one I'll specifically talk on is the Labo Variety Kit. Um, because one of my friends was nice enough to send it to me as a birthday gift, so I was like, excellent, I get to play with this, all right. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Lavo Variety Kit was the one that came with the piano, the little RC car, the fishing rod, the little house thing, and uh, the motorbike like handle. Yeah, that's a um, good good kit. It's got a you know it's a good amount of variety. A it good variety, fun. as it's called, the variety as, kit. As it's called. <laughs> Uh, but no, I was surprised at the amount of content that's actually in there. Because if you count building as some of your playtime, which I would, um, there's actually a, a lot to enjoy with this. Because um, it has very kind of zen-like, fun quality. Just putting it together, like if you were playing with Legos or something, I I enjoyed that very much. Just following the instructions and putting the pieces together and seeing the final product of what you made. And even the instruction videos for Labo are really Nintendo-like. Like, Like they have fun dialogue that goes along with them and really just corny jokes. Like, uh, when you're making, like, all the piano keys, they're like, all right, here's another piano key. I think this one's, this one's gonna turn out great. And like, yes, I know, we've done this already so many times. (laughs) And you can like fast forward and slow down like your videos as you hold the buttons and like the music speeds up and stuff and it's really really fun touch to it. Yeah, I and was. Then... Oh, go ahead. I was finish. Yeah, and then and then playing the games is pretty cool too. Um, I think some are better than others. Like some feel kind of just like small tech demos, while others have a surprising amount of depth to them. My favorites are the the fishing one and the house one. Um, fishing it's really cool because like the line actually tugs onto the screen so it has like a physical screen but on the the switch screen itself like it has a digital screen and somehow they like both move at the same time it's like this is sorcery and you can like feel a tug as you're real and you're like how is it doing this um 
And I like the house one too, just because you like put different knobs into the house, and there's all sorts of different combinations. So it's kind of fun finding all the combinations, and they have all sorts of different little mini games with it. So, but yeah, there's a lot of fun, creative stuff, and if you really want to dig down into it, they have a lot of extra stuff that you can build too, and like get real technical for those who want to. So. Yeah, I remember they, they did a contest um, to see, you know, what people could do with Labo, and um, yeah. I think the guy that won was like a, um, I, don't, I think it was the guy that won, he did the, was he the one that did the um, the restaurant, the ingredients, the cooking stuff, where you had to like mix, you had to like mix like a bowl, and then a, maybe, yeah, I feel like it, uh, he either got second place or he won, I can't remember which was, okay. but... But whoever won got an awesome cardboard. Uh, oh, the cardboard! The, the cardboard switch, switch. or the, was it the whole switch or That's, just the Joy Cons? I think it was. I thought the it was switch the whole or switch. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome though. But it looked so. The design of that one was probably the coolest custom switch I've seen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I thought that was really really cool. Um, but yeah, touching back on what you said about um, building it, that's like the main reason why I wanted it because I love hands-on models and Legos and connects and stuff like that and it's what I grew up with and you know even to this day like anytime I get something new I'm just tinkering with it so um you know Labo to me that was like the most exciting part but I think it was what 80 bucks for the kit something like that it was 80 bucks at launch or I think the variety kit was 70 I think the robot one was 80 um but yeah, they were they were a little more expensive than your traditional game. Yeah, well, I mean, which which isn't a bad thing, but I knew that it was something that I would enjoy the building process, and then I would never touch it again. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I could I couldn't justify buying it for myself, but if I had a kid that was old <laughs> enough, <Yeah. laughs> you know, my son is see that. ten months, he can't, you know, he's not going to understand what's going on. Um, <laughs> if if he was, you know, four, five years old, I probably would have bought it release day because it would have been something we could have enjoyed together and put together. Um, you know, I mean, I might even end up picking it up in the future. Um, yeah. You know, and they've if had they're some still around and, later. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, we'll, uh, we'll see what the lifespan of the switch is, but you know, as my son gets older, I'll definitely consider, you know, picking up more stuff like that. So, um, it's just it's just easier to justify. Um, yeah, I've spent more money on stuff that I have probably played with less, so <laughs> I can't I can't you know say that I'm not you know I'm not that type of person to spend money on stuff like that. But um, it was just it's harder to justify it for something that I literally know I'm never going to touch after I put it together. Yeah, so. I, I will say like the the two probably like negative aspects about it is a it's very hard to like it's bulky stuff you have to find storage for it after like what am i doing with all this cardboard now and um it's also if you want to play it it's kind of a pain setting it up having like slide all the joy cons into the holders and it does kind of demotivate you from like picking it up but when there's someone who hasn't seen it before just like the sheer uniqueness of this product is just I think it makes it worth it in the end. I'll have so. to come. I'll have to come play yours since yeah. I since I didn't <laughs> since I didn't buy it. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I mean, that pretty much covers the first two years. I mean, we we went we over it. we did we went over a lot of stuff. Um, and again, I'm sure we missed something. And anyone that yeah. wants to fill us in on what we missed, feel free. Um, but with the labo being the last that we spoke about. Um, it does make a good segue. It does. So we've got but some. Before that? that, we may need a break here That's so fine. I can charge my phone. No so. worries. <laughs> Let's take a break. And we'll come right back. So we 
took our break. We're back. And... I'm a different different ankle here, but yeah. it should be charging now. So <laughs> <laughs> that always that always works. Um, I, I made sure to plug mine in before I started. <laughs> that way, it wouldn't. I, be... I was at a hundred percent at the beginning. Jeez. I guess the uh, hour fifteen minutes is a. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 cutting it long, and we still got a we still got a a big topic here of the future of 2019, at least what we know of so far. Um, for Switch, um, and I just kind of want to say this, um, I don't think we'll be 100% Nintendo and Switch all the time. Um, <laughs> I don't know how, I mean, that's what we love, we do love Nintendo games and stuff, but we will definitely talk about, you know, Patrick's, he is a, he's a big PS4 guy as well. Um, right, right. I play um, some VR, I play stuff on Oculus, um, as well as on PC, and there's a few things I want to talk about in the future about that. Um, so this first two episodes were just very heavy due to the Switch being pretty much the most innovative thing on the market right now, as far as <laughs> changing how you play the game. So that's what a lot of this is uh, you know, being featured on right now. Um, but just look forward to the future. Hopefully there's something else. If you're not a big Nintendo fan, hopefully there's something else that will reach out for you. Um, but with that said, we're going to look ahead to Switch in 2019. More Switch. Yeah. <laughs> More Switch. <laughs> um, so with the Labo being the last thing we spoke about, uh, we just got the announcement of Labo VR. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, I mentioned that I have Oculus. So to me, it looks it looks like a Viewmaster, kind of, um, you know, when you're a kid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, obviously with the specs of the Switch you're not going to get an Oculus Rift experience and I am totally fine with that I think that if anybody can make a fun experience with VR it's going to be Nintendo without having crazy realistic graphics and everything else they'll do something that's fun I mean, um, you just look at examples like Wii Sports and stuff. Like those are very simplistic games, yeah. but the pure gameplay of it just makes the experience so much fun. They're gonna, they're gonna. I'm sure there's gonna be something that hasn't been seen before in a VR game that just nobody thought about that they did. That it might not even be that great, but it's gonna be something that no one ever thought of before, and it's gonna be like, oh, that's interesting. It might not translate well in you know how they present it but it's going to be something new it's going to be something innovative that's just what they do um but with that being said i expect it to pretty much be like google cardboard which was for you know google pixel right. devices or the google uh, i believe it was the dream dream view was their uh the google pixel vr set something like that i think it was dream view is what it was called um or like the Samsung Gear. Um, yeah, some, some simple setup. Um. Yeah, and those had some pretty good demos on them too. I mean, they had they had um, some pretty good games where you could like you spin and you're standing in place, but you spin around and you shoot a you sh- you're like a cannon, like a turret on a cannon, and you could shoot things all around you. Um, they had the roller coaster movies, the videos where you feel like you're riding a roller coaster. Um, they had the theater modes where you can watch a movie to make it feel like you're in a, you know, big space. You really don't need that much processing power for that. So at least, you know, for those type of things. Um, but the big thing everyone talks about is the resolution because the resolution of the screen is 720p. Um, most VR stuff you're seeing is 1080p, um, 60 frames a second. We'll see how it or actually I think it's like 90 frames a second on Oculus for um I definitely can hit that <laughs> it's not I mean it's you can't expect it to I don't think even PlayStation VR would hit numbers like that now PlayStation VR is on the lower end um <laughs> from what I've read and what I've heard as far as the experiences I've only played PSVR once um and I played Eve Valkyrie which is like it was cool but I definitely did get some motion sickness from it from flying around space and just being like yeah that but, game. <laughs> but it, it was really cool but when i stood up in the best buy i was kind of like uh i already have like 
I already feel dizzy all the time, and then I <laughs> do that. But um, but yeah, I think I think that um, this is going to be a very simplistic, um, basically a kid's introduction into VR. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe a lot of adults too. Like, yeah. Who I mean, I'm t- I'm tempted to check it out. Um, I'm very interested to see what they're what they are going to do with it because again I really feel like Nintendo will do something innovative I mean just if you look at what they showed it looks like it's like a telescope but you actually you know you're going to spin that thing on the back and it's probably going to zoom in and out and Mm -hmm. without without like the bazooka thing and the bird yeah it's going to be like without having like you know I have an oculus with a touch you're not going to have this controller you're holding. You're actually going to physically be moving the thing. It's yeah. probably going to have the little tabs installed. With the... And it isn't anything like the, the previous level kits. They'll probably have, like, cool rubber bands and things in there to help give it that kind of tactile pull feel. Yeah, exactly. They're going to have that, and then you're going to have the little light sensors. You're going to put the IR sensor into the box, and then when you do that, it's going to reflect everything and make it, you know, get its signals and however all that stuff works. But, um, yeah. I think it'll be it'll be a neat experience, especially for kids that have never seen anything like that before. Um, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, again, I know Labo is something that I can't justify spending the money on, right. but um, I'm interested to see how this plays out, especially in depending on what software comes out for it when they make it. If there's something that I see that looks very intriguing, then I could consider picking it up, even if it's just, even if it's like, and it's not going to happen because it's a lab. Okay, they're not going to put Mario in it. But if there was some like Mario or Zelda like 3D dungeon, you just took a tour of, I'd probably buy it for that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just well, that is another thing. Sense. They have been surprisingly introducing Labo support into previous games like Mario Kart. That's true had two different Labo kits get updated into that game so yeah so i'm really hoping we get maybe with that uh vr camera that's in that kit that uh, we get maybe like a pokemon snap 2 or something yeah Yeah, it would make it would make perfect sense to integrate that especially with with um let's go just coming out and the new ones coming out and how big pokemon go is and pokemon go just added the uh the ar camera into oh, yeah. to the phone so now you can take pictures of you know your pokemon in the real world um so that would be a great way for them to do that will they do it i guess pokemon um, company would have to get involved and game freak yeah, and all that yeah. stuff but that's not for us to figure out that's <laughs> we just sit back wait and see what happens but um but i am i am looking forward to seeing uh what comes from that yeah, um, and then like the previous Labo kit, half the fun is building it, and then the other half of the fun is kind of just sharing the experience with others. So I think it will should be a fun venture into VR. Yeah, and I mean I think the prices were pretty reasonable too. I saw you could get like I feel like the full kit was like ninety bucks, but then you could buy like a slim down version of the kit for like thirty bucks or something like that. So depending on what they release for it. Um, you know, I might pick up that cheap one. It was either thirty or forty. I don't remember, but yeah, I forget what the price points were. I didn't. Yeah, I saw up. them listed out. I don't remember exactly. But there were two, there was definitely two. One was just one game in a kit, and the other was like five different. Uh, yeah. To build. Yeah. So. so I mean, yeah, thirty bucks. I'd give it a whirl, depending on what it is. I mean, again, I I have an Oculus. I'm not. I imagine they would choose the the most popular one for the small one. So. Probably, probably the yeah. one that they're going to put the most effort into, that they want to get in the most hands. I'm sure that's what they'll do. So that'll be the Pokemon Snap version. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, but um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. And then if they do a uh, another competition or something where people can make a VR experience, yeah. I mean, it's really going to come down to how the VR performs. That's I mean, with the uh, the resolution and the frame rate, and hopefully nobody gets sick from it, which I I don't know. I mean, that can happen. Um, but... It could, but at the same time, I think Nintendo's been so cautious about 
approaching VR that I don't think they'd want to do it unless they are delivering what they consider an ideal experience. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly why, you know, they never talk about Virtual Boy. Ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they, they do not talk rest. about it. <laughs> and every time somebody brings up, like, oh, you need the VR? Oh, well, we failed. We already failed once, and, you know, they don't like to have failures, as we recently saw with the Wii U. So, um, <laughs> it's... It's definitely something that um, it'll be interesting to see how it works out, and I can cross my fingers and hope that they do a Virtual Boy Classic Edition uh-huh. <laughs> or some sort of virtual console for VR um, for Virtual Boy. Um, that'd be just awesome. Again, to play Wario Land, which I can play it yeah. on my on my Virtual Boy, which you can kind of see over there. That's that's the virtual boy right there. Oh yeah, but, I see that. Yeah, just the, just the corner, but uh, and it works. It works perfect. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, if they do a competition and somebody makes something really cool out of it. And um, and with that being said, Mario Maker Two was announced on this last direct. Tell oh, me. So, oh, what a great way to start it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Right? Oh, well, they started it, and it was kind of funny because all the rumors of Super Nintendo coming to online, I see, I hear the music for Mario World, and I see, you know, little Sprite Mario there, and I immediately was like, goosebumps, yes, Mario's coming, you know, <laughs> Super Nintendo. And then I saw a bunch of spikes, and I was like, oh, this is Mario Maker. That's cool. <laughs> like, it just didn't click at first. I was like, Super Mario World, oh, Mario Maker. Mario Maker, awesome! Like you know, I played a lot of it on uh, on Wii U. I know me and you shared levels, and mm-hmm. um, I uh, I really enjoyed that. And everyone's happy. Like the reactions online are really good because they've added slopes, which was something that was missing. They've yeah. added a lot of assets as far as um, like enemies, and that was something I told you before they even announced it. I was like, I was like, if they announce Mario Maker they've got to add like the sun from Mario 3 and stuff like that and then the very next clip you see in the game is Mario jumping and the sun coming down so it was it was really cool to like you know be able to just talk about that before and see it come to life the next day it was really really special and um, I'm looking forward to playing that I'm really looking forward to playing that game Um, because I think the game was great but it kind of got the the game levels online kind of turned into what eShop is now. They're just kind of <laughs> <laughs> is that is that a good way to put it? Yeah, um, yeah, just running through the I don't want to call it garbage, but like you come across levels as like you're at the start and here's the flagpole. Where's the yeah, thought? <laughs> yeah, that, or like just millions of enemies everywhere. Yeah, stuff <laughs> that you can't you like. I don't even know how the creator beat it because it's just so but absurd you find those like few gems of custom created levels and you're like all right this makes it all worth it this yeah. is so cool yeah it's it's really good my, my biggest frustration with the first one was um just i do like the the 100 live 16 <laughs> whatever i forgot what the levels were how i think it was 16 wasn't it to get through the to get yeah through the whole i think depending on what difficulty you chose was how okay. long it and I'd always start doing it, and then I'd always get to, like, auto-run, don't touch anything, don't press a button, and I was like, I want to play, I don't want to watch what you did, like, let me play the game. So I really hope that this has a filter for that, or something, a way to... That would be nice. Like, they should have an option, like, to enable it, like, this is an auto-run game. But I don't know if, if they could even do that, honestly, but it'd be nice. It's if that's, if that's my wish list is to have a way to filter the um some of those levels out because it just kind of got too much it was it was too much sometimes and or you'd get a level like you said it's literally like somebody spelled their name in blocks and then there's the flag <laughs> <laughs> or like one of my buddies he it's um my level. <laughs> yeah one of my buddies he uh he did his uh son's gender reveal with mario maker Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it was pretty cool. He did like he spelled out like it's a boy and coins and then like fireworks going off at the end and stuff like that. And then I saw online somebody did a uh, somebody proposed to their wife 
with that like you know will you marry me with the custom level and stuff like that it's really neat it's really neat some people did some cool stuff but you know those could be local games they could be online i don't know but in order to play um you know i want to have that option to actually be able to play the game and not just watch what other people have done (laughs) if i wanted to do that i'd go on youtube and watch (laughs) somebody else beat a level that i can't (laughs) So. I really, I really hope that they bring back the amiibo support because that was one of the coolest uses of amiibos that they've had in any game. Yeah. Having those skins of like all the eight bit versions of all these characters. I would so, have to imagine it's going to be there. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they would get rid of that, especially yeah. since they're still. I mean, not as hard, but still pushing amiibos. So. I mean, they're they're pushing amiibos pretty well, and people are still lining up to buy them. From what I've been seeing <laughs> online, like Piranha Plant was like immediately sold out. Um, oh, I just saw like We Fit Trainer just got a re-release the other day, and like people were posting that it was in stock, and um, <laughs> so people are still going after them. Um, at least the ones that are you know coming out. Um, I'm kind of glad I got rid of all mine. <laughs> just because of the i don't know it was it was a lot of space you you did a really good job with your uh with your collection putting yeah, on the show yeah i'll have to show that another another episode just to show it off in the camera yeah yeah it's really good um but yeah your stand was really good and you know me not opening them kind of made it difficult and when i moved i didn't really so want to have to <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to find a spot for him, honestly, because, you know, my old place, I kind of just had him along the top of the wall, and it was like, all right, it's fine, but there was just clutter everywhere, and um, I, I made out, I got some good Super Nintendo games out of the trade, so it, it worked out well for me, but um, but yeah, I, th- I think they'll definitely keep that in there, because the Switch I just has... love how they use them in Mario Maker, like, even the fact that they had, like, custom little animations and like sound effects like when they die and hit the goal post they had their own victory tunes i was like yeah. oh that's so cool well, like when you got captain falcon in the one level you made as soon as you get his mm-hmm. skin it's like the little like f-zero music like when the level starts <laughs> so yeah uh, it's, it's, it's it's definitely very charming what they did with all that it was really good job on their part but you know the switch supports Amiibo and NFC and yeah. I don't see any reason why they would take that out. Um, I yeah. personally, I want more assets. Um, they've only showed off a little bit of gameplay. They didn't talk about it at all. Um, they didn't, but if you dig into that trailer, they actually showed quite a lot. Um, like, you, there's like, it looks like at least two to three wheels. You saw the new wheel is mm-hmm. like a quick select per like, um, I guess uh, Mario template of assets worth. So there's like probably a good uh, seven to twenty-one enemies per uh, Mario game. Um, there, they looks like there might be vertical levels now, which looks really cool. Yeah. Um, just all kinds of really interesting features and stuff. Um, and the whole new template of Mario 3D World, which looks really interesting. Like, it's adding a lot of different it's things like, next to it. Yeah, it was like 2D, but it was all the assets from 3D World, which, yeah. is, which was interesting, because you, you had the cat suit, which still worked like the cat suit that would let you, you know, run up the walls or the flagpole and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. So that's definitely going to be an interesting take on, um, you know, how you can approach platforming and you know a 2d landscape um but i think for me i like i know there's a lot of assets but i would love to see like you know mario 2 of course which i don't think uh that one's a bit of a it's so weird it's such a weird art style it doesn't really fit with the other ones like and really it was not ever really based off mario's it's kind of like its own type of game yeah. yeah i mean it makes sense why it's not there but i i love that game <laughs> so, I do. Yeah. but it would really be cool and that was something i did with the first mario maker was i remade level one one of super mario or uh, super mario <laughs> land on game boy and game boy would be cool i think it'd be cool to be especially since they you know they they give the game boy love in um 
yeah. Smash Bros. You know, Smash Bros. has the Game Boy screen level, and you know, you've got kind of that, you know, the little Game and Watch style graphics, and um, mm-hmm. I think it'd be really neat to be able to do that and get some of the the assets from that. The music from that game was really cool. Um, you had some very unconventional enemies. Um, you know, you weren't playing, you weren't fighting Bowser. You were, you know, <laughs> fighting like um, just different levels there was like the the easter island heads were like throwing rocks and stuff at you and you you're fighting like a submarine underwater and like Mm -hmm. it's just really really weird game but i love that game that game and it's fun it's a quick game you can sit down and beat it in like an hour yeah Um, yeah but i'd love to see that you know some of those assets come over just to be able to you know play it on a it might be screen. harder just like the translate between the two you know like how it's like a snap of the fingers and it transitions yeah but... and, and that makes sense and that's kind of what i was getting at with the mario 2 like it doesn't really fit the art style of the other ones yeah. where but it'd still where, be cool if they could where, at like, least get some features or something yeah, from them you've got like show. mario 1 mario 1 to mario 3 is like you said snap of the fingers and it's looks better mm. and then mario 3 to mario world it's very similar because you've got slope still excuse me you've got uh slope still you've got you know pretty much the same enemies um mm-hmm. just in a 16-bit art style instead so um but yeah that's that's gonna be a great game i'm looking forward it's to it great. i'm looking yeah, forward to I... see how the controls work mm-hmm. um if you're gonna i can't wait to like make levels on the go with the switch and then like take them home put them in my dock and like all right let's let's try this out and that's what i'm wondering if they're gonna do like a stylus package or if it's going to be touch screen or if it's only going to be or if it's just going to be those wheels like pushing in the joysticks or something which works but i just think that 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 was the nice thing about it being on the wii u is that you could pinpoint everything you wanted it was so easy and smooth to create that yeah so it'll be interesting to see how it works out yeah I like I like how they also introduce more backgrounds or a lot of backgrounds which look cool because now you got like desert environments you got snowy levels you got yeah. jungle levels so that's pretty cool because yeah. you didn't have the like foresty uh, Super Mario World back in the first Mario Maker and now you saw that in this trailer I was like yes yeah. more Mario World backgrounds <laughs> yeah so good <laughs> um, so yeah that game's that's that's a day one purchase again oh yeah cause... can't wait and june so soon too. yeah yeah so, it's okay. right around the corner it will be I, uh... I, i'm betting you that might be one of their e3 events which i love that's one of the things i love about mario maker is that seeing pros go blindly at new levels that's what they did for the world championship was it last year or the year before that they did the nintendo the world championship first e3. championship ship that they did yeah, yeah that was like their final event which was so much fun yeah so that'll be that'll be interesting to see um yeah so i bet you that's aiming for yeah i mean i wouldn't even be surprised if that's their um does it does it just says june right we don't have an actual just date june, so. yeah so i wouldn't I, be surprised I, if that's it probably be like finished by e3 but it might come out like a week or two after yeah so that i wouldn't be surprised if the, that's their e3 theme this year super mario maker or or definitely a bit yeah for sure yeah so um but yeah that that's that's definitely a huge game that they uh you know they dropped and they knew everyone wanted that especially after like kind of the lack of support that the first one got so you know so soon after release for it being such a big game it yeah, just that was done. one game on Wii U that seemed just like perfect for it. It was like you were built. This is why the Wii U was made. Yeah. <laughs> this is your purpose. <laughs> talked about some other games in the direct they uh they talked about the new fire emblem and i'm gonna let you talk about that because <laughs> that game is way over my head i have nothing to say about it um i tried playing i tried playing the demo of um awakening awakening or echoes first... or whatever it was the one 
Yeah. The one that you bought when we went to the Nintendo <laughs> store a few years ago. Um, and I just, I, I wasn't, ex- I, I think the art style is really cool in the game. I, I love the, like, you know, the Japanese anime style look and the warriors and all that stuff. I think it's really cool. I just hate that style of gameplay. I can't <laughs> stand it. Um, and that's, that's perfectly fine. That's me. If anyone else likes it, that's fine. I know you <laughs> like it. You enjoy it. That's cool. Um, it's just totally not for me <laughs> at all. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, what did you think about the new one? The, uh, was it Three Houses was the title? Uh, yeah, that's, that's the new Switch one coming out. And to be fair, I didn't really get on the Fire Emblem bandwagon until Awakening also, which is the funny thing, because I had the complete opposite reaction as you. The demo is what convinced me to buy the game, so... <laughs> It's just the gameplay style. I think style. one of the few demos that have ever convinced me to buy a game. I was like, oh, this looks so cool. <laughs> I just love the music and the style, the way the cutscenes look so gorgeous, yet at the same time, like, they had the 8-bit animations for, like, the overhead map, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I, Fire Emblem Awakening was, like, one of my favorite games ever after that. I put so many hours on a 3DS game. <laughs> um, but yeah, Three Houses looks... Like, they're shaking it up. They're trying something different here. Uh, you putting you in charge of an instructor instead of, like, a pupil or anything, and you have to choose between the three houses. It almost looks like a Hogwarts Fire Emblem game. Kind of, you're, like, yeah. picking a house and getting, like, all these different students to follow you and trying to train them to be the best house. So it looks fun. It looks very different from the past Fire Emblem games and um, I don't know if it looks as graphically impressive as I thought of Jump to Switch but it still looks pretty good it looks like a pretty good jump Um, and yeah I'm I'm definitely more inclined about the game than I initially was when they first showed it off so I'm happy I was able to snag one of the collector's edition because they just showed the box art for the like normal version and it looks so bad I'm like I'm glad I have a different (laughs) <laughs> physical case <laughs> that's good and you're you're not usually one to buy the collector's edition either so no i mainly got it just because i'm hoping the art book has more than like 10 pages so <laughs> yeah. yeah that seems to be yeah. i'm a sucker for art books so yeah, yeah it is what it is i'm a sucker for boxes full of random <laughs> i don't need so <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there's. Uh, they talked about that. Uh, we also have heard about Luigi's Mansion coming soon. Luigi's Mansion Three. Um, they showed like about thirty seconds of it back in a. I think it was a September direct. Yeah, something like that. And it was. It was like. Was it how they started it, or like one of the last things they I, talked about? I, I think it's how they started it, and it threw me off guard because I was like, "Up, oh, they're getting ready to talk about Luigi's Mansion for the 3DS." Yeah, and I'm like. This doesn't look like that. Wait a second. Is this a new? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So they so they remade the first one. They put that on 3DS, and I was a little disappointed about that because I've I've tried playing it on GameCube, and the controls are a little wonky. Um, I thought it was you know kind of difficult. I I I just just love the GameCube controller and the pressure sensitive yeah, trigger. Yeah, yeah. I think worked well for that game, yeah. but. Um, but then I did pick up Dark Moon on 3DS, and I thought it was great. I thought it was That's a lot great. of fun. Like, very, very good game. Controls work great. Um, the secrets... 3D was the, so good. Yeah, the 3D was fantastic on that. Um, and, like, you know, I played co-op with you, where you've got to run around and too. try to get everything. That yeah. was a lot of fun to beat, you know, each level of the tower. Um, mm-hmm. That was cool. Um, so I was really hoping that the first one was going to go to Switch, but it went to 3DS instead, which 2 was good on there, so there's really no reason to be that upset about it, other than the fact that I just don't like the small screens of the 3DS. <laughs> Even though I have a 3DS XL, I still prefer the Switch screen, <laughs> and I don't like yeah. having the, uh, the at this clamshell. Point, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I was looking forward to to that and was disappointed but then they announced three so three's coming to switch i will probably pick that up day one um, oh yeah maybe before then i'll go back to playing the first one so i can at least 
it's so worth it. Get into yeah. it. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty short game. Yeah, so. that's what I've heard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Could be in years. that's what I'm like hoping that they. I don't know what they're gonna do, but like I could see like some cool accessories coming out for it, like Labo or something like that would be cool to throw into a Luigi's yeah. Mansion Three. Um, yeah. Specifically because of the um, the arcade game that we played at Game mm-hmm. Busters is like really cool to like hold the actual vacuum <laughs> and stuff. I think that was that was a lot of fun. Very cool. So if, um, they, if they could pull off something like that, it'd be kind of neat. I don't expect it. I'm not going to hold it against them. <laughs> even if they don't come up with some accessory, at the very least, I hope they make use of the HD rumble to kind of capture that same effect like they do in the arcade game. Yeah, the field. yeah get sucked in and you will actually like feel it in your controller i'm sure they that will was... yeah because like the hd rumble is really neat i don't know like if you noticed like back going back to like mario kart with the hd rumble you could mm-hmm. like hear you'd like pick up a coin and you hear yeah. it in the controller it can some like, the sound effect just through like a rumble yeah it's really weird because the first time i played it i was like what the hell like i was in bed and i had the sound off but I kept hearing like this, ka-ting, 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 and I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. And then I realized that it was the HD rumble that was causing that sound effect. I thought that was really neat. So, um, and just everything they've done with Labo, just using those controls, um, I'm sure they'll they'll have something special set up for. No, I'm surprised they never made a Luigi's Mansion for Wii, like just so you could use the flashlight right? and stuff. It seemed like such a missed opportunity. <laughs> Yeah. So they could do something like with this too, with the Joy Cons, and yeah. like aim your flat and vacuum around and feel tug and yeah. So yeah, there's I a lot of potential. Do a good job. Um, yeah, and yeah, like I said, you should give the first one a shot. It's worth the, the main difference between the original GameCube one and the like 3DS ones is the first one was more centralized and like one big mansion and like just slowly unpeeling the layers of the mansion and exploring it, which was pretty fun. Or the 3DS one was more like level mission based, going across multiple mansions. So they have different flavors, but they're both great games. Yeah. Uh, did you play the 3DS remake? Oh, I didn't play the the remake of the original, no. no. I'm, I was talking about the Dark Moon. Oh, gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, no worries. Um, so, um... The other big announcement was teased via a uh, Smash, a Smash release, oh, yeah. um, which you know, uh, I again, it's another game that I'm just not into. Um, I don't know like if I'll. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll. Uh, that, that one's a... so we're talking about Animal Crossing, correct? Yes, Animal Crossing. Right. Um, so Animal Crossing, I watched a friend play it. Um, and it just didn't look like anything I would be interested in. Because, um, again, That's I like more action, action-oriented action games, and it depends. I mean, I can get into some games, like visual novel games, stuff like that. It just really depends on my mood. Um, but I don't know about just collecting stuff and living life. I live life enough. I don't need to live <laughs> it in the game. <laughs> so... It's hard to describe the appeal of it, but there's... Oh, it's huge! works it, it just hooks you <laughs> yeah i mean I, I know it's 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 very very um you know um anticipated title um people have been just oh my god give us animal crossing give us animal crossing why don't we have animal crossing and animal crossing's like made a bunch of money on the mobile game they made and all the old versions that came out have always been great great yes one so probably the best in the series so that was the one Uh i watched my my buddy played it and he was like i've played this game for like 50 hours and he had it for like a week and a half (laughs) so that's uh, like the one game for me that i played every day for like a full year just because it's that real time kind of game you just want to play once a day and see what's new in your town and it's it's just so zen like relaxing it's so so yeah. much fun to... but we have zero news on that game no, other, no, other, just, than other than it's supposed to come out this year made, coming out this year yeah that's, i hope that's what they say <laughs> but may i remind you that breath of the wild was supposed to come out in 2015 <laughs> so... 
We'll yeah, no, I, I could see this being delayed, but at the same time... I mean... They have a pretty solid framework, unless they're going to really shake things up, so... Well, we already had the delay of Metroid Prime 4, and True. we had the delay of Bayonetta. Wasn't Bayonetta delayed? Wasn't it supposed to... Or didn't they push back something on that? I don't think it ever had a release date. It didn't have a date, but I feel like they said it was like slower than normal or something like that recently. Yeah. Oh. Or they, they um, weren't as far as they wanted to be or something like that. They don't have anything more to announce yet, which yeah. means not much. Yeah. It's going to be a while still. It's because Platinum is now, um, you know... They're probably, doing so much for the Yeah, they're doing Switch. a lot of stuff for Switch. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, if we don't have much to say about Animal Crossing um, that'll be a game that I'll be passing on but you will have more to talk about that in the future I'm sure as soon as it comes I'll... out I will for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take over your life so um, so then at the end of the direct oh. um, so I was driving in my car and had the direct audio playing and the phone was in the box. It was in my center console. And I look down, just real quick glance, and I see this animated water. Japanese animation. That's what it looks like. Like, 90s Japanese animation. And I'm like, what is this? And I was thinking... I was thinking it was going to be, like, I don't know, like, another Pokemon game or something. Like, it was going to... I just didn't know what it was going to be. Um, but then I glanced down again real quick and I saw Link's boot and I knew immediately what it was. And I immediately, the hair on my arm stood up and I was like in the car by myself, yes! <laughs> Screamed out. <laughs> Link's Awakening is coming to Switch and it looks it looks fantastic. The game, I can't. It looks so adorable and amazing. It does. Um, I again, I was driving, so I, you know, I, I try to practice uh, safe driving. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't watch it. I was like literally listening to it and just like quick glances down at my phone, and I was like, <laughs> nope, I gotta stop. So, you know, I got to I got to the parking lot where I was headed, and um, immediately like watched it again and was just goosebumps the entire time especially like the intro when the lightning hit the boat and then it, oh. and it showed the the zoom out of the island and Link's Awakening came up in that font and then you hear the music kick in and then seeing that artwork this claymation style um, Link running around it's like a like you said kind of like a toy doll thing it's with a toy like this oh. Yeah, it looks really it makes cool. Me, it makes me so happy when they decide to do, like, original art styles. Like, that just warms my heart. It's like, yes, this looks so new and different and adorable and just... Ah, and that dang. was something that, like... So, it, it obviously, it looks like it's made with um, Unreal Engine 4. Just because the kind of the textures you see on the trees look very similar to like Yoshi's Island or not the Yoshi's Island yeah, it the has Yoshi kinda, game, Crafted World kind of like reflective yeah uh, like uh, map to the textures um, yeah, like normal just, map quality that's, that's what I notice in like everything that's Unreal Engine 4 kind of has that look to it mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've seen like in this way it works very well oh it's great like, it looks beautiful um and my only complaint, and I've made it clear multiple times on the internet, I only have an issue with Link's eyes. Even though it matches the sprite artwork one to one, it still bugs me that his eyes are just black little dots and there's no white on it's the back, eyes. Back around on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Again, I, like I'm gonna play it. I'm going to buy it. I don't care. Um, but that was just the one thing when I first saw it. I was like, he looks like he's dead. He just looks like a dead guy running around, but then kind of fits. Yeah, <laughs> it does, and it's just like I don't know. It's really that was just the one thing that like immediately stood out to me that I was like, 
I don't like the way the eyes look, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm going to buy it, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to love it because everything I saw on it was amazing. What um, cracks me up is when we added the whites to the eyes. and yeah. You'll have to add that here to the video. The side by side. Yeah, we'll, we'll post edit this into this so people can see. But <laughs> they showed a comparison image of him looking like the elf from the Rudolph movie. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, well, no, they, they took, they took I forgot the dentist. It's the one that wants to be a dentist. Yeah, that one, yeah. yeah I yeah. forgot his name, but when I posted that on the Facebook group that I posted it in, somebody posted that and the best part about it is that they they photoshopped in him holding a sword and he's wearing the green tunic like they just colored his clothes green and he's got the eyes and it looks almost identical it's hilarious um so you have to post your i'm gonna, I'm gonna find that i'm gonna put it in our video <laughs> yeah you have to put your the one that you made for me when i told you that that the whites were weird um or the eyes missing the whites of the eyes were weird and then you have to put them side by side in the video <laughs> but uh, but again i mean I, I have nothing negative to say no. about it i still I, it still looks amazing um that was I, just, I love just a new art direction uh, you could hear like re-orchestrated music so that's gonna sound so good oh, like, the, all, the ending all of that trailer the ending of oh, the trailer where marin's like humming the windfish the ballad of the windfish mm -hmm. was just goosebumps like i said i was in the car and it was like Yes. Uh, and I was like, yes, that's so good. That was like one of my favorite songs in the Zelda series, The Ballad of the Windfish. Yeah. So I can't wait to hear that redone. Like, if For you listen to it at the Zelda too. concerts, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's so good. I need to go to, I need to go to one of those orchestras. Um, yeah. I, I looked at yeah, it going a couple times. I just always kind of, I always kind of back out last minute. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, like. I the taste of the, the Ballad of the Windfish from the. Breath of the Wild, because uh, they kind of work that theme into Hyrule Castle. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's gonna be amazing. I can't wait to play that game, especially to see all the bosses, because the bosses were so weird. Um, I'm. Per yeah. In particular, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, is like level seven, and that's the one where you have to knock the pillars down with the ball. Yeah, that's the, the bird tower. Yeah, one. the bird tower. I'm yeah. really, I'm really curious to see how that's gonna look. Just because, like, I remember that being like the hardest level for me to figure out. Because that was like, a really cool dungeon. Yeah, there was one. There was like one ball that I couldn't find to throw at the at the thing. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get it where I needed to as a kid. And then the yeah, day I, I figured it out. Navigate around that tower because they're like all these walls and they're like oh, oh i can't carry this over here what uh, and that's why you use forward and select at the same time to wall warp <laughs> <laughs> and then it would glitch the game because you get stuck in the wall and you'd lose all your progress if you didn't yeah, i don't stay. know if we're gonna have that still <laughs> it'd be it'd be interesting if it got if it got put in as like an easter egg but no i don't expect <laughs> to have that in there which is totally fine i don't need it but but there um, are going to be a lot of quality of life improvements. Like you saw in that one shot where you can now have your sword, shield, and jump at the same time. Yeah, that's going to be really awesome to be able to like not hit start every two seconds to switch between bomb, sword, shield. But it was nice you could change the sword to another button. So, True. You know, and that was that was the case in you know all three Game Boy games. Um, yeah, cool. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So it was nice to have that. Um, we'll see how they do it in this one. If uh, if like I the... imagine it's gonna be assigned to a certain button, but maybe they'll let you customize the controls. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering if they'll let you do that. Um, but uh, we'll see. But that game is just so great. I can't wait to do the trade quests and see all the characters in the yes. game. Get that... called me from stealing in the store. And... Yes, <laughs> like yeah, I want to. Like I can't wait to see that guy. You know electrocute me in the game <laughs> like it's just uh there's just a lot of love for that game especially you know i've played the original so many times i've played the dx version a bunch of times um you know i have both of them on game boy i have them on my 3ds i have them on my wii u i have them pretty much everywhere i can buy them because i <laughs> just love those two games um, or all the game boy games for that matter but yeah, Link's Awakening is top three Zelda for me. Absolutely yeah, top three Zelda. 
that's an amazing thing. It's just a small Game Boy game, and yet it's, it's such... not small though. It's like it's the, game, the they game. They did is... such a good job, like capturing the Zelda essence and just like elevating it to levels you didn't think possible. Yeah, just like all the weird like stuff they have in it, like with the Mario characters and um, oh, just one of the coolest stories next to like Majora's Mask and stuff. And yeah. Just yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's that's my like most anticipated game for 2019 right now is a game that I've already played and beat a million times <laughs> but just to see that new twist is going to be <laughs> it's going to be something special so yeah um so I guess that's that's pretty much all we have to say about Link's Awakening um yeah you know hopefully yeah. it didn't spoil too much of it there talking about it but I, 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 think, we, I think we kept it yeah spoiled. but if, if you haven't the, played there are a lot of people who haven't apparently played this yet so yeah. that's it's gonna be um, awesome for them because people don't go back you know people usually don't go back to game boy game boy doesn't really hold up that well but um i think that game holds up pretty well overall personally um the biggest really issue well. is the biggest issue is the buttons remapping all the buttons that's mm-hmm. really the biggest difference between that and any other zelda game um because they did such a good job with it but um, we'll look forward to hearing more about when that comes out. Um, I'm assuming we probably won't hear anything until E3. Maybe they'll do a direct before E3. Um, yeah, they probably E3, I'm guessing. Yeah, that'd be my guess. We'll probably get a September, October release, maybe, November, end of the mm-hmm. year, fall, something like that would be my guess. Um, but Pokemon still is coming out, too, so they typically don't release big games that close together but they did smash in pokemon last time so yeah yeah i think they can fit it in around the fall probably yeah yeah we'll see so um and then so like the last thing we're going to talk about i don't really have much to say about it but i know you're really excited about it and that's uh hollow knight silk song the sequel gotta mention it like it was direct worthy but they had their own announcement the next day and this game just looks amazing it was a. It was originally planned as just like a kind of add-on DLC, to, so you could play as uh, Hornet, the female character in Hollow Knight, and what turned was supposed to be just a simple little expansion turned into a full-blown sequel, yeah. and this gonna have like 150 new enemies, a whole new world to explore, and just oh my gosh, it looks so good! I can't wait. Yeah, I watched I watched the trailer and it looks you know it looks great. I'm excited to play as Hornet to see what her controls are like. Mm-hmm, um, style of play. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to because the controls were so perfect on the first game. Mm. Um, I think that they'll be just as good. I I don't 100% expect it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't expect it to be any you know any worse than what the first one was. So. Um, but other than that, um, you know, I again, I beat the game, but I didn't beat the game as far as getting like the full <laughs> percentage and the um, the real ending, I guess. But um, Dude, you know, that's right. You didn't get to see the the true final boss, which is so cool. In that yeah, game. you'll have to you'll have to come over and help me with that because I just kind of got burned out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to playing it because the first game was so good. There's there's absolutely no reason why I wouldn't buy the next one. Mm-hmm. It's it's a game that'll probably take over anything I play, and I just hope that it doesn't come out around Link's Awakening. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, it doesn't have a release date yet, so it's probably yeah. a ways out. I'm guessing it might be like, next year, probably still. Yeah. At but, least. So. Yeah. Well, like they said, they're they're a team of three. Yeah. <laughs> a team of three making like. And they don't know quite how to pull back on how far they want to make it so <laughs> yeah hey i mean they've done an amazing job all you can do is give them credit because it's it's one of the best games i've played hollow knight so was good. probably one of the yeah. best games i've ever played very very yeah. very done very 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 well done and i was listening to some of the developer commentary for this next one and i just even the premise sounds so good like hollow knight it's all about digging deeper and down into the hollowness and this one it's kind of taking the flip approach and you're going to be like extending to the top of this peak of this yeah. other 
seeing them and I'm like that sounds so cool it sounds so yeah. interesting yeah the, of the game is so different from that yeah I remember so. listening to that as well and um yeah hearing that but yeah that's that's definitely a good an interesting way of it of talking about it because but I, I wonder if that's going to make the environment look more bright and you know yeah just, just... I think it will definitely give it some different flavors to it just yeah. that approach yeah, because Hollow Knight, like you know, like you said, you the farther and farther you dig, the it know, gets darker and creepier, and then all of a sudden you're like in shadows with like spiders crawling. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, I'm too far down. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see what they say about that as far as the release date, and um, you know that'll that'll be another purchase right away. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, fan gamers doing a physical collector's edition and standard release of um so of tempting the first just... one but I, I want it but i'm like i'm never gonna play it it's literally gonna sit on the shelf because i've already played so long <laughs> on the dlc or on the uh I'll just wants to cut. get it just so i can be like you haven't played hollow knight here you go <laughs> take it yeah <laughs> true and supporting those guys because like 15 bucks you know 10 15 bucks for 45 hours of gameplay like that's just insane especially at launch like 70 hours yeah yeah i mean you're talking it's one thing if you paid 15 bucks like you know three years after the game came out but i mean this is a game that's been out for you know i don't know a little over a year maybe if that at least on switch i mean switch it hasn't been on out. switch it came out in june so it hasn't even been a year yet yeah, yeah so I mean, just, I mean, it, it sold so well on Switch that now they're doing a um, synchronized a release. Eight day release, yeah, yeah it's with, crazy. With PC and Switch now, just because of how much the Switch community, like, grabbed it and pushed it. And I, I would mean, assume the next one would probably even have, uh, maybe might have a physical copy when it comes out. Who knows? I mean, I'd be all over that. It makes sense. <laughs> Oh. then if it didn't have a physical release at launch I don't know if I could hold back behind it digitally first yeah I mean that's the problem like I didn't you know I, I prefer physical over digital but I wasn't gonna hold off on playing something with you know no certainty that a physical copy was gonna ever come out so so then I heard about it yesterday and that launched the game so yeah 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 so, so I guess we did it. We uh, we finished the first two Our, years, and yep. we talked about the future. Um, we did not get to uh, Pokemon. Other <laughs> Pokemon, yeah. But, but we can see that for another episode. There's enough to talk about Pokemon, I'm sure. The... Yeah, I don't have too much to say, honestly, but it's fine. We can talk about it next episode, or we can, we can scrap can, it, either yeah. one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Give it some, we'll give it some time. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it for a little bit. But, um, but yeah, I think that's going to wrap up episode two. Um, this episode's a lot longer than our first episode. <laughs> uh, hopefully the quality is better. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. I think the video quality should be better. Um, we hashed out some of the issues in the last one. We still might have some audio issues. Um, but I think you're not, you know, you're not going to hear my fan going crazy like last time. That was, that was my bad. And, um, <laughs> you know, if this is bad, third time's a charm. <laughs> so stick, <laughs> stick around. <laughs> um, and if you have any, you know, if you need any topics you want to, you know, reach out to us and suggest, maybe we can talk to them and, or, you know, talk about them and see if we have anything to say about it. Um, you know, obviously Patrick is probably more well-rounded on a lot of stuff. I'm kind of straight lane gamer I kind of jar and retro <laughs> gaming knowledge that I don't got so yeah I mean if it's if it's retro I probably played it if it's um, arcade pinball I probably played arcade. it pinball yeah. um, you know stuff like that I've probably played it or have a little bit of knowledge about it but um, a lot of newer stuff unless it's an action RPG or a maybe not an RPG but <laughs> an action game or some sort of uh, you know Metroidvania platform or something um yeah, I can I can talk a little bit about that, and Patrick can as well, and he can cover all the other stuff that I don't like. <laughs> uh, 
push more games onto chat to try. <laughs> yeah, I try. I just time time's always hard to find, and then just getting motivated to play games. When you have too many hobbies, it kind of it kind of overlaps on top of each other, and you miss out on stuff. So yeah, <laughs> but one of these days. So all right, well we'll wrap it up. I'm gonna keep rambling if we don't. So uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. Um, like I said, you'll be able to find us on YouTube. Uh, you'll find it on Podbean, and hopefully by the next episode, we'll be on iTunes. So like, subscribe, leave us a comment, and we will see you in episode three. All right. Happy gaming, all. Happy gaming.